Hello and welcome to Plab One Discussions. Today I'm going to be discussing a MCQ. So let's get started. So we have a 35 year old lady who's been complaining of unilateral headaches associated with nausea and photophobia. They've been occurring once every month for the last six months and stop her from doing her normal activities. The headache can last for five hours. There is no pre-warning or abnormal sensations before or during the headaches. On examination, cranial nerves are grossly intact with normal blood pressure. What is the single most likely diagnosis? So our options here are a tension headache, cluster headache, trigeminal neuralgia, giant cell arteritis or migraine. So the single most likely diagnosis is migraine. So let's have a look at migraine. With migraines or with any headaches, we, it's very important that we think about the demographics and the statistics associated with that headache. Headache is extremely common, and so you need to have a think about how likely is it in the patient that I have in front of me. So with migraines, the statistic is uh, female to male is three to one. So that's making it three times as common in females compared to males. So we have a female here in this scenario. The diagnostic criteria, if there's no aura present, which is the case in this scenario, is there needs to be five or more headaches. They need to last between four to 72 hours, have associated nausea or vomiting or phonophobia or photophobia. So in this case, our patient had one headache every month for the last six months. So that gives her six headaches. They lasted around five hours and she had that associated nausea as well as photophobia. In addition to this, you need to have two of the symptoms of unilateral, pulsating and impairs or worsened by activity. So typically these patients aren't able to continue their normal activities. They need to normally go into a dark room, lay down um, with no noise or any bright lights. They may also have allodynia, which is essentially increased sensitivity to pain. So they may complain of pain on brushing their hair or shaving. They also may have aura. So this aura is any type of um, abnormal sensation that they may experience. And this may be somatosensory, visual, which we see more commonly when we think of uh, migraines, motor or speech. The triggers of migraines is also very important and we need to make sure that we elicit this. So chocolate is a mnemonic that stands for um, chocolate, hangovers, um, orgasms, cheese, oral contraception, lions, alcohol, travel and exercise. The management of migraines is obviously trying to think about what the trigger is and trying to avoid this trigger. There's also prophylactic treatments. This is for patients that have recurrent migraines and they want to take a pill every day to stop them from happening. And this may be propanolol or topiramate. The treatment during these attacks may be oral triptans plus simple analgesia such as ibuprofen, naproxen or paracetamol. There are also non-pharmacological uh, interventions as well. So now let's have a think of the other um, distractors that we were provided with. So we had tension headache, cluster headache, trigeminal neuralgia and giant cell arteritis. Tension headache. So Tension headaches do uh, present in these sort of attacks. So this patient was having monthly attacks. So again, we could sort of um, assume that this may be a tension headache. They tend to be bilateral. So this is where our scenario doesn't quite fit in with tension headache. They are non-pulsating. So patients typically describe it as pressing or tightening, like a tight band around their head. The symptoms, the headaches associated um, with tension headaches tend to be mild to moderate. So it doesn't really interfere with patients' activity of daily living. Um, they tend to be able to continue doing their normal activities. The symptoms can last for a few minutes to days. The pain is not aggravated by routine activities of daily living. And when we do neurological examination, it tends to be normal for these patients. There are different types of tension headaches. We may have infrequent episodic, frequent episodic and chronic, and it's worth being familiar with these different types of tension headaches. 
The management of uh, tension headaches is doing simple analgesia. We have acupuncture. You may um, decide that your patient may benefit from cognitive behavioral therapy um, and relaxation therapies as well. Next now, let's have a look at cluster headaches. So cluster headaches are extremely disabling. It really has a major impact on a patient and it's, it's not um, a, a very good diagnosis to have. There is an unknown etiology associated with cluster headaches. Again, let's have a think about the statistics. So the male to female ratio is five to one, so five times as common in male. The onset can be at any age and it is more common in smokers. The symptoms tend to be a rapid onset of excruciating pain around one eye. So this is how cluster headache differentiates from the scenario that we had because we have eye symptoms. So in cluster headache, we have the eye becomes watery, it becomes bloodshot, there's um, eyelid swelling and lacrimation. We also um, see that there is pain around um, the one eye, so it tends to be a unilateral um, type headache. The symptoms can last between 15 to 180 minutes. Cluster headaches, as the name suggests, they occur in clusters. So what this is, is that we have, um, they, they occur in sort of clusters of episodes, so once to twice a day for four to 12 weeks, um, and then it's followed by this pain-free period, which can be anything from months to years. Associated with this unilateral headache, um, we have facial flushing, rhinorrhea, um, meiosis, which is constriction of the pupil, and ptosis as well. The treatment for cluster headaches is essentially high-dose oxygen and sumitriptam. Trigeminal neuralgia is another differential that we had. So this tends to affect men over the age of 50. So it doesn't quite fit in with the demographics that we had in our case study. The symptoms is um, intense stabbing pain. The stabbing pain can last for seconds. So again, different from the scenario that we had that was lasting five hours. The pain tends to affect the trigeminal nerve distribution. And again, it is unilateral. Patients um, commonly present with tic dolorou, which is essentially they screw their face up in pain because that's how, um, how, how severe the pain is. The triggers can be um, anything from simply washing face, shaving, eating, or even talking. The treatments tend to be anti-epileptic, such as carbama uh, carbamazepine or lamotrigine. If drugs do fail, um, an alternative is surgical input. And lastly, we have giant cell arteritis. So giant cell arteritis, um, common in elderly, so generally affects patients over the age of 50. It's associated with PMR, so polymyalgia rheumatica. The symptoms are headaches. Um, the headache tends to affect patients in the temporal area or on the scalp area. So these patients might say that when they brush their hair or have a feel of the scalp, it feels very tender. They get tongue and jaw claudication. They get something called amaurosis uh, fugas, which is basically um, temporal partial complete loss of sight in one eye. And it's typically due to um, an abrupt reduction in blood flow. Patients may also be malaised, fatigued um, and have morning stiffness as well. The bloods that we do for giant cell arteritis are extremely important. So we may notice that their ESR and CRP is raised, so inflammatory markers will be raised. And the management tends to be a temporal artery biopsy, as well as initiating high dose steroids. So usually about 60 milligrams per day, and this typically lasts for two years. And here are the references. I hope that you found the uh, discussion today useful. Um, best of luck with your revision.